Welcome to Converting to Tops and Chops. Here we're going to take a closer look at just these two families and how we can better understand how they work. To get started, let's go ahead and add a constant chop here to our network. With our constant chop here in our network, let's go ahead and add a few channels to get started. So we'll start with, say, four channels. We're going to right click on the output of our constant chop, head over to tops and grab a chop to top. Now in our chop to top, let's make that viewer active and also turn on our, our display pixel values. This will make it easier to see the changes that we're uh, making here. So as we make changes to our channel values, we can see how that updates a pixel with the corresponding value. Now in this particular configuration, and I'll point out that here our data format is set to R, we have a single row of pixels for every channel. And this is important because we might also think about how we want to combine multiple channels to describe a single pixel. So for example, if we did RG, we'd see here that we have two channels that make up a single pixel. So we might have our first pixel as red here. So red one, green zero. And if we make our second pixel green, we can think of red as zero and green as one. Now we might also think about how we could use multiple channels uh, beyond just two to describe what's inside of a pixel. And in fact, if we were to do something like, let's do something like this where we have RGB and let's come over to our chop two and we can change this to RGB. And now the values of these three channels combined together are what describe the color value of this pixel. Now, we sometimes work with multi-sample chops. And in fact, if we head over to the pattern chop, we can see an example of what this might look like when we convert to tops. Let's turn the length or the number of samples down to something smaller like 10. I'm gonna make this viewer active and turn on our dots per sample here. I'm gonna right click on the output, head over to tops and grab a chop to top. In my chop to top, I'm gonna to make that viewer active. I'm gonna turn on my pixel value so it's easier for me to see what's happening here. And right away, let's go ahead and make one other change. So we might notice our pattern has both positive and negative values, and it's difficult to see pixels that have a negative value. So let's go ahead and change our from range to be negative one to one is in the range of zero to one. And this makes it easier for us to see the kind of sine wave of values as it's converted. In this case, we can see that for each sample, we're going to uh, end up with a new pixel. Now, we might also want to combine multiple channels when we're thinking about our conversion to pixels. So let's head over to channels and let's add a second channel here. And in fact, let's also add a little bit of an offset. I'm going to write just a small little expression which looks like me.chan index. So my channel index divided by me.num chans to provide our offset. And now we might think about how we combine these two channels, say as RG, to describe how we're making up our pixels. This has lots of different applications and it's important for us to be able to see the kind of relationship that emerges as we think about both channels and samples as they're converted to pixels. Now we can also convert from tops to chops. And in fact, if we add a constant chop here to our network, or in this case, a constant top here to our network, head over to the common page. Let's make this just one pixel by one pixel. And let's go to chops and select a top to chop. Now what we can see is that the data inside of our channels is then converted over to tops. And in fact, if we change our values around here, we'll see that that in, does in fact uh, change the resulting value that we see inside of our chop. Now, it would be great if we only worked with single pixels at a time, but in many cases, we work with many more pixels than that. And if we were to say, look at something like a ramp top here, and in this case, let's make this ramp top say just one pixel, 10 pixels by one pixel here. Now this, if we go ahead and right click on our output and head over to chops and select a top two, we'll now see that we've got a ramp. Now we're going to have the same values in both the red, green, and blue channels in part because our color here is just black and white. It's monochromatic. If we were to say head over here to our top value and maybe select a different color here, we'll see how that, ha that changes the values that are resulting in our conversion. 
Now we could also think about how we work with an image that's larger, larger than just like uh, say one pixel by 10 pixels. Let's say that we have something that's 10 by 10. And in this case, let's look at something that's more like a circular or even a, yeah, a circular gradient is great. I'm going to make this viewer active and go ahead and select in this case, pixel value so we can better see this gradient. And now when we go ahead and convert this to chops, we'll see a slightly different pattern emerge. And part of what we see here is described because we're cutting right through the middle of this texture. How do we know that? Well, if we head over to the crop page, we'll see that we can describe the start and end of our U coordinates going across our image, and then our sampled position as a V coordinate that goes up and down. Now for now, we'll leave these just as normalized values, but it's worth knowing that you can also think about this as just pixel values. So you could do just a pure pixel coordinate if you'd like. And we can also think about how we move through this image, not only top to bottom, but left to right. The last thing we'll look at here as we think about how we convert between these families is what happens if we wanna have all of our pixels represented just in say four channels. What we might do in that case is we change our crop to be full image. And in this case, we're gonna have RGBA, we'll have four channels per row that's inside of our texture. Uh, and we can see that repeat, right? So here's zero, uh, R0 through A0 is gonna represent the first row of pixels. R1 through A1 is the second row of pixels. And in fact, if we turn on the dots, we can even see how our dots per sample helps us understand how that corresponds directly to being a single pixel inside of our texture operator. But typically what we wanna do in this particular scenario is we wanna output a single channel. And when we turn on this parameter output as single channel set, this will let us see all of these values stacked one right after the other, which is a better representation of how we typically want to think about converting from tops to chops. Now, when it comes to converting to chops, we might also think about how we move from tables to chops. So let's take a look at how we might do that. So starting with a table dot here, let's go ahead and do uh, make a few changes. So I'm going to add a, another column here. So apples and 10. Now, if we right click on the output of our table here and head over to chops, we can convert this with a dat two, and we'll see how the first item, our first row, our first cell is converted as the name and 100 is converted as say the value. So this is the number that we end up with. And in fact, if we add another row here, we might call this Kiwi and our Kiwis plural here, and we have 20 Kiwis and we can see how that also converts into a value that's represented as another channel whose name is the first row. Now, if we right click on our table here and add another column, let's go ahead and say this is 10 and five or maybe 10 and 50, we'll see in our conversion that we end up with a second sample. So in this case, we'll get a, a sample for the number of columns minus one. So we'll, our labels doesn't count as a sample. And so we can continue to think about how we add additional data here. Now this is really powerful because it's a fast way for us to think about how we can convert data between tables and channel operators. Now, not all of your data is arranged like this. And in fact, if we use a transpose dat here, we'll see that in many cases, our data might be arranged in a format like this, where we have column headers. So let's go ahead and right click on our output, head over to dat2 and take a look at how we might convert our data if it looks like this. In this case, in our dat2, let's go ahead and change our output to be a channel per column. Let's use our first row to be described as names and our first column to be described as values. And now we can see how we've converted that uh, data effectively, just like we might in this other format. So it's worth knowing that there are lots of ways that we can actually make this conversion happen. One other thing that we might wanna do is we might also wanna think about how we take, say maybe a surface operator and convert that surface operator into channel data. 
Now, this is really useful in a lot of different circumstances. And here, what we'll see if we turn on, uh, say, going to our display options and turn on the points for our sock, and we turn on the dots, for example, for our chops, we'll see that we have a sample for every point that we have inside of our surface operator. And each point has three channels, has a TX, a TY, and a TZ, because that represents the space, right? Our position is represented as those three channels. Now there's lots more data that we can convert out of SOP. So in fact, we might grab things like the normal or the texture uh, or its point index. This could be very useful, especially when we're doing instancing. And this is really useful for us as we think about how we move data between operator families. This is just a quick look at how we convert data between tops and chops, and there's lots more to come.